Hello YouTube, today we're going to be talking about hypothesis testings and research. Um, here are just some like the outcomes we're going to be comparing like what your research says versus what the actual result is in real life. So I made a similar video about hypothesis testing in terms of the kind of the overview of the concept and calculations. This one's just going to be talking mostly about the null hypothesis and alternative hypothesis um, and research in the real world. So we have this null hypothesis which is that H naught and we have our alternative hypothesis, which is our H sub A. And I like to think of our alternative hypothesis as our research hypothesis, kind of what your research is rooting for. You're trying to uh, suggest or show something's happening based off what you think, and you're using statistics to kind of help that. In order to scientifically uh, justify it, you have your hypothesis, and then therefore you use hypothesis testing to help justify your results. So the null hypothesis generally for statistics testing um, is saying that there's no change between two things and the alternative is, or the researcher trying to say yes, there is a change. Um, so, real quick, um, yeah, okay, I kind of gave it away. But innocent until proven guilty. This is kind of how I think about it. So this is a really cool concept that helped me uh, grasp the idea a lot better and I want to share that. So um, here I want to emphasize proven. Proven is what we're going to be using with statistics to kind of justify, I like to say, um, our answer for being guilty. And you can think of innocence as being your initial hypothesis and guilty as being your alternative. So we all assume that you're innocent in the legal system until you have provided evidence that you are guilty. And the providing evidence is the researcher conducting the experiment or the evidence or whatever to uh, justify or show something. So if you flip this and said guilty until proven innocent, then you would say, oh, we automatically assume that uh, you, know, you committed the crime, but now you have to provide proof that you didn't. That would totally flip the legal system around. Um, same with hypothesis testing. So think of it, of it that you're automatically innocent, there is no change. Guilty means um, that there is a change and that you can compare with the hypothesis here. So now uh, here are the outcomes. So I'm going to make this uh, kind of like Punnett Square or kind of a display table here. Um, so we have our actual result in the real world and what we say, meaning we as the researcher. So you could say your initial hypothesis, or excuse me, your null hypothesis is true, and you also, when you conduct your research, you verify that it's true. Okay, that means they're both correct. You were correct, and in the real world, you are also, it's also the same. So there is no change or difference between two samples means, for example, uh, that will go to a drug testing or something. That There was no change by using a drug that is right in the real world and by your statistic analysis. So then you do your alternative hypothesis and your alternative hypothesis is true in the real world and it also was true on how you proved it. So you proved it and you're like, or you justified your uh, data and, and you found out that something is actually true in the world that no one really quite knew before. So great, that's awesome. So good, good job for you, researcher. Um, so that's great, that's the kind of goal, well, the research hypothesis uh, so think something, and it might be true, and in the real world it is. Um, and they found a way to uh, prove it, or justify it, I should say. Um, but now, what about the opposites? So what if your null hypothesis was, or your you thought that there was a change, but in reality there wasn't? That's called type 1 error. And we'll get into that in a second, but then I want to talk about um, if what if the... Um, your null hypothesis during your experiment, you said, okay, I guess there wasn't a change, but in reality, there really was. That's called type 2 error. So we're going to get into that now, what these mean. Um, so type 1 is denoted by alpha, and alpha pretty much is saying um, your, this type 1 error says that you're claiming the research is correct, but in reality, it's not. This is really, really bad. Uh, so it's kind of like saying, oh, sugar cures cancer. I've done my research. I've published it to the world. Sugar cures cancer. That's the, sol that's the mystery to all our problems that's been solved. Obviously, that's not correct. So that's really, really bad to have that in your name published, things like that. It's just not good as a research. Um, but if you were to say, oh, sugar does not cure cancer, that's not as bad because that's generally known. 
Um, and that's kind of like what we're going to be going with with type 2 error. Um, but we'll, we'll talk about that in a second. Um, so type 2 error is your beta, and pretty much it's a false negative. Now if we were going back to that uh, drug analysis I kind of gave earlier, that scenario, type 2 error would pretty much be if you said that the drug had no effect on a disease, but in reality it did. So it actually did change something. So that's not as bad as saying you're saying, oh, I totally think, like going back, sugar cures cancer. That's not as bad as saying, oh, I don't think this drug does any work, uh, does any, um, that I don't think this drug doesn't, like, increase or decrease blood pressure. Um, and then, but it actually does. So, hey, that's actually good. That's what we wanted, but uh, you thought wrong kind of thing. So that's not as bad kind of have that negative positive idea here. So now going back to this innocent until proven guilty. Now how does that relate here? So if you're still kind of not grasping it, hopefully this will print, uh, hit it home for you. Um, so we have type 1. What would that be? So type 1 is saying that you are guilty, but you're really innocent. So that's the worst. Thing. Like, you were innocent of a crime, but the legal system uh, provided some sort of evidence that made you appear guilty. That's not what we want to do. That's what we, we're trying to minimize that. That's the worst thing possible. You don't want to send an innocent person to prison. That's bad. That's really bad. So that's that type 1 error, which again is the worst you can have of the two. Um, and then you have your type 2 error, which is when a, you're innocent, they, or when you're actually guilty, um, so what, what that means, I'm saying this wrong. Okay, here we go. So they, the judge system figures the notes or they claim that you are innocent, but in reality, you are really guilty. You committed the crime, but you got away with it. That's type two error. That's bad, but it's not as bad as sending an innocent person to prison. Think of it like that. It's bad, but not as bad as sending an innocent person to prison. Um, so if you have that kind of mindset, hopefully it'll help you understand it a little bit better. Now what happens when you try to minimize this type 2 error, since this is really bad, everyone wants to keep this down. Uh, we don't want that to happen a lot. So if we were going to go back to this um, legal system analogy here, if we wanted to minimize type 1 error, we would pretty much have to, it would deal with prisons, and you would have to close down all the prisons, because there wouldn't be any uh, innocent people to send to prison because even if they were con con uh, considered to be guilty, they wouldn't, you know, if you would minimize that by decreasing the number of prisons. But that means you would have a lot more people who have committed crimes out on the loose. So uh, that's kind of the comparison here when you try to minimize this. When you try to minimize this, you maximize this. Um, so if you minimize type 2 error, you maximize, excuse me, if you minimize type 1 error, you maximize type 2 error. Um, so that's kind of what happens in terms of keeping it controlled. So our, we, we try to keep everything balanced and controlled to assure that legal system, I guess, is uh, doing a good job. Um, but I hope this helps in terms of understanding the concept and seeing kind of how it relates to research as well. Um, just kind of wanted to make this video because I found it very helpful, and I hope it was helpful to you too.